Tadaki api, chanwashtea napech yuza pielo, tachonkucheska imachi apielo, malakota. My relatives, I greet you with a warm handshake. My name is Holy Road, I am Lakota. My non Indian name is Kevin Aberesk, and I am the managing editor for Indians.com, a Native American news website owned and operated by Ho Chunk Incorporated, the Economic Development Corporation for the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska. Thank you for joining Indians.com for the special interview tonight with the leaders of the two largest tribes in America, President Jonathan Nez of the Navajo Nation and Principal Chief Chuck, Chuck Hoskin Jr. of the Cherokee Nation. It is good to have you both. Good to be with Thanks you. Thanks for having us, Joe. We have a very special show set up for you tonight, but first I would like to give a brief introduction of my two guests. Principal Chief Hoskin Jr., Chuck Hoskin Jr., was elected to serve as the Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation, the country's largest tribal government with more than 380,000 tribal citizens in 2019. Prior to being elected Principal Chief, he served as the Cherokee Nation Secretary of State. President Jonathan Nez of the Navajo Nation was elected in November 2018. The Navajo Nation has nearly 332,000 citizens. Prior to serving as president, Nez served three terms as a Navajo Nation Council delegate, during which he also served as the Navajo Nation Vice President. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. Good to be with you, Kevin. Mr. President, honored to be with you, sir. Chief, thank you, and it's an honor for me as well. Well, we have a lot to talk about tonight. I'd like to start by just giving an update on the situation. As of tonight, Wednesday, April 8th, the Indian Health Service is reporting 661 positive cases of COVID-19 within its facilities, including 322 within the Health Service's Navajo region and 59 in its Oklahoma City region. However, I understand the Navajo Nation is itself reporting 426 positive cases and 17 deaths among its citizens. The virus is in your communities tonight, and I want to thank you both for taking time out of your busy schedules to, to brief our viewers with the conditions in your communities. I'll start with you, Chief Hoskin. Well, again, um, very nice to be with you this evening and honored to be with, uh, with President Nez. And, uh, you know, my heart goes out to the Navajo Nation, giving, uh, given what I just heard in terms of those numbers. Uh, it's affecting the whole country and the whole world, but uh, uh, it's uh, always discouraging to hear those kind of numbers coming out of anywhere in Indian country. I think that tribal governments, though, are on the front lines of COVID-19 response and will be on the front lines of COVID-19 recovery when that time comes. Uh, we're on the front lines in Cherokee Nation in part because we have the largest uh, tribal health system in the country. When it comes to public health in our part of the country, uh, we are, uh, I think, the strongest force for uh, public health and health access in this region. And I think we're leaders in that regard. And our leadership in this part of the country is needed now. And I, I think we're delivering on that as best uh, as we can. Uh, we're focused on making decisions based on medical science, based on facts, and based on compassion uh, for our people and the community where they live. So that's driven us to do certain things, uh, martial resources in terms of health care, uh, making sure our elders have food, uh, and making sure we protect our workforce. And so we've taken some actions to do just that. Uh, I think we are like a lot of health systems across the country uh, in that I think as a nation, the United States, uh, there wasn't the preparation that all of us would like to see. I uh, think it hits Indian country uh, particularly hard uh, for a variety of reasons, not the least of which are the levels of bureaucracy that we all uh, must work through when we're dealing with uh, having to respond this quickly. Uh, but I, I do think uh, Cherokee Nation is, uh, is putting our best effort forward. Uh, I think we're as prepared as you can be but being prepared as you can be in COVID-19 means uh, bracing for some difficult times ahead. Uh, different parts of the country are going to be hit at different times, and we know that our numbers are going to increase, our numbers of positive tests, our numbers of folks that are suffering, and our number of folks that pass away. Those are facts, and those are headed towards us. We're just doing uh, our level best to flatten the curve, as they say. Uh, our people say. So I'm honored to be on the show tonight to talk about this. Uh, and I think it's obviously it's a subject that 
that consumes all of the attention of tribal leaders these days, myself included. Great. Um, would you talk a little bit, uh, Chuck, about uh, kind of what sort of um, capacity your tribal health system has in uh, addressing this kind of a pandemic? And, uh, you know, such as how many beds you have, um, how many ICU beds, those kinds of things. Sure. Well, we have, uh, again, a, a large uh, health system. We've got uh, right now uh, a bed capacity of 56, uh, eight ICU rooms. We're working to expand our overall capacity by about 40 percent, and we're looking at other facilities in the area. There's a local college, and we also run a job course center where we could uh, house patients who are not in critical status but still need a period of recovery or isolation. So we're working on expanding uh, in terms of, uh, of tests. Uh, we, we also are looking at expanding our ability to do tests. You know, I think a lot of the country was in the same boat in that we have uh, sufficient uh, test early on, and I think that's what's driven most of the country uh, to uh, take a very conservative approach to who gets tested. As a result, that means the numbers of people that are positive, I think, are underreported. Uh, um, as we can test more, we can track more uh, the spread of this virus, and so we are now in a position where we'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,500 tests. Some of those are are the rapid test. We have some rapid testing capabilities that we've just developed. We just signed an agreement with Abbott Laboratories to do that. Uh, and so I think we're building up our capacity, the same as with respect to PPEs, the personal protective equipment, the mat, uh, the gloves, and that sort of, uh, of items. Uh, you know, those were in shorter supply. Uh, we've worked to increase that supply, but again, I think we you know, none of us uh, live in a vacuum or in isolation. And I think uh, all over the country, these shortages are affecting how the United States as a whole is responding to COVID-19. But our capacity, I think, is growing. Uh, and uh, we're certainly hoping that the capacity can meet the demand. The numbers I see, though, across the country uh, tell me that, that that demand is going to be very uh, severe uh, and that our system will be stressed. But I think we're putting the most resources we can uh, to uh, meet that demand. Great. Uh, President Nez, I'd uh, ask you a similar question. Just uh, describe, if you would, your tribe's health care system, including whether it is uh, tribally controlled or run by the Indian Health Service, yeah. as well as um, how many beds your health system has and what kind of capacity you have to address a pandemic such as this one. Well, thanks for the question, Kevin. You know, here on the Navajo Nation, we have uh, 13 uh, healthcare facilities, as you may know, 27,000 square miles of land here. Land-wise, you know, we're in uh, four states, majority of uh, New Mexico and Arizona. And we're stretched pretty thin here. You know, I mean, we, we don't uh, have the best health care. I'm sure it's like that clear across the country and, and all the uh, tribal communities. Um, you know, just yesterday I, I got a report, um, and that report was alarming that there was only uh, 50, a little bit over 50 ventilators here on the Navajo Nation, the size uh, of West Virginia, right? And uh, 350,000 uh, Navajos uh, here on the nation. And, you know, for us, we're, we're tight knit communities throughout the, the 110 subdivisions, uh, chapters here on the Navajo Nation. So once, you know, we did we did our very best, uh, Kevin, to do, keep this bug out of our nation. You know, we, we, we were doing um, preparedness and planning and getting the people, uh, the information needed because it was pretty much all around our nation. And we declared a uh, emergency before even our first positive case because we wanted to be able to be ahead of the game. Uh, I want to say to all our Navajo citizens, thank you for listening to authorities. And one thing that I think everybody recognizes throughout the country, throughout the world really, is that this uh, virus is pretty sneaky and it'll spread pretty quick. You know, in Indian country, and the reason why uh, as of last evening, 426 positive cases, I'm, I'm going to be getting the new report here uh, shortly, 426 positive cases. Um, 
you know, we're, we're such a tight knit community that, you know, shaking hands is respect, hugging. Uh, we have uh, ceremonies that get that are done in our communities, birthday party. You know, when it comes to social events, you know, us natives, we're, we're always there, you know, we're, we're there for the food, we're there for the, uh, the, the family uh, gatherings so that we can connect with each other. And as is where uh, I'm sure throughout the country, you know, uh, multi generations uh, live under one roof. And so once this bug snuck into our community, man, it just took off. And then right now when we're just letting everybody know to the best place to be is at home. And that's why we have a uh, shelter in place order, only essential workers, those that can that continue to run the government are, are working. And also we just incorporated a week ago uh, a curfew um, from 8 p.m. to, to 5 a.m. each day. Um, and then this weekend, we're gonna have a 57 hour curfew starting Friday at 8 p.m. to Monday at 5 a.m. So we're doing everything in our power as a sovereign nation to uh, protect our citizens. And uh, we, we just want uh, our citizens also to recognize, to uh, adhere to the healthcare professionals as well as their leaders in their community to um, hunker down and, and stay home. Um, you know, we, we've been, uh, and it's like this, I'm sure again, throughout the whole country waiting for, if you want to call it, our share of resources to come into Indian country. Um, you know, these three resolutions or these three legislations, these funding appropriations, the recent one, the $2 trillion, are, are supposed to be uh, aiding the U.S. citizens. But um, some of us see that our, the first citizens of this country are, are still at the bottom of the list. And, you know, if you notice uh, our, our plea here is that, hey, we want our share of resources. It shouldn't go through the states. It shouldn't go through the uh, federal uh, programs, the federal departments. It should go directly to tribes so that we can uh, aid our uh, doctors, our nurses, our healthcare professionals, those uh, first responders that are out there that are dealing with the, the people on a daily basis to, to, protect, to protect them. And, you know, Vice President Myron Leiser and I, you know, boots on the ground. I mean, if you take a look at our Facebook, our social media pages, we're out there trying to, you know, let the people know that the Navajo Nation is doing their very best. The government is doing their very best to get those funds that have been allocated now a couple of weeks ago to come into the Navajo Nation. And, uh, you know, we're not going to wait, though. You know, Kevin, we're not going to wait, Chief. You know that. We're going to use our own resources that are on our nation and to work directly with other tribal governments to help our people. I mean, that's what we're, we got to do uh, to protect our citizens. And it's quite interesting throughout the country, uh, leaders are being pitted against each other now. And I'm hoping that that doesn't happen in Indian country because you got uh, governors uh, of states, you know, uh, New York, uh, God bless them, California, the need is there. But uh, each leader out there, uh, including tribal leaders, are trying to advocate uh, for their citizens. And that's what we're trying to do here on Navajo. And I'm sure, you know, the chief is uh, doing the same thing for, for his citizens as well. And we are, are not going to wait. We have to put in, uh, reach into our pocket, bring out $4 million of our own dollars to help out with the uh, emergency operations here. And you know, we have also a, a positive story, if you want to call that in this, you know, if you want to call it a dark time that's happening throughout the country. But we have uh, invested in our own uh, latex glove manufacturing uh, facility here on the Navajo Nation. And we're getting gloves to all our healthcare uh, facilities here on our nation and also blessing other healthcare facilities throughout uh, the region, Southwest and, and throughout the country. And so I think we're all in this together, as they say in, in Navajo, and I'm sure in all the other tribal uh, teaching is that we're all five finger beings. It doesn't matter what color our skin is, you know, we're all in this together. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, we'll, 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 I know that we'll overcome this. Uh, we've got, all of us have gone through some trying times in our history as, as citizens 
of this country. And, you know, this, this pandemic that's uh, sweeping our country, sweeping our, our, our nation, will we'll be stronger um, from it. I, I truly believe that. And there's some positive stories that are, that are happening out there where citizens are stepping up, young people are stepping up to the plate to help their elders. And, uh, you know, there's positive things that are coming out of this, you know, with schools being closed, you got elders uh, sharing their stories with our children out there, uh, families that haven't had uh, dinner together in some time, or, or well, at least on Navo because of our curfew, they're being uh, forced to uh, have some, some, uh, you know, some time together as families. So th there are things that, uh, positive things that are going through it, but you know, we, we we're just hanging in there here on the Navajo Nation, doing everything we can with our federal uh, partners to push this uh, COVID-19 coronavirus out of our households, out of our communities, and out of our nation. Sure. Uh, my next question here is for Chief Hoskin. Uh, if you would describe uh, what sort of culture-specific approaches you've taken to educate and serve your community's needs at this time, and what types of social distancing requirements you've instituted. Um, before you start answering, though, there real quick, I'm going to show a photo. And this is a photo taken, uh, I believe, from a press release that, from your tribe. Uh, this is a photo of Cherokee Nation employees loading food into a U-Haul for distribution to community organizations that, in turn, distribute that food distribute that food to Cherokee elders. I thought that was a nice thing to do there. So, um, yeah, if you would um, just kind of describe what sort of um, culture-specific kind of approaches you've taken and uh, what kind of social distancing requirements you've instituted. Sure. I, that's a great question. But before I get to it, I, I want to applaud. The, he made many great points, but a couple of great points that uh, uh, the president has hit on was, one, we're all in it together. That's certainly the, the mantra at the Cherokee Nation in my administration. It needs to be that way all over the country. And number two, he's right. If uh, Indian country waits on the federal government, would wait on the states, uh, we're backing up is, is, is how, another way to put it. Uh, we certainly need uh, the government of the United States to live up to its obligation. We need good relationships with the state and for everybody to do their part, but we can't set back and we haven't set back. Clearly the Navajo Nation has not and neither has the Cherokee Nation. But with respect to the question and then the photo that you've, uh, that you've shown viewers, you know, health was our biggest concern, but the other concern was uh, food security. You know, when you're asking a population that is accustomed to gathering up and and uh, and sharing meals and asking a population, that, you know, like everyone else in the country, needs to go get food at the grocery store and that sort of thing, when you're asking them to shelter in place, when you're asking them to stay at home, particularly elders, uh, when you're saying, you know, look, you're you're revered as elders and you're uh, among the most vulnerable members of our population through this pandemic. When you say that, you've got to couple it with something else. You've got to couple it with some uh, assurances, some ways to build confidence and some ways to address real needs. And food was one of those needs. And so the first thing we did is when uh, we shut down all of our hotels and casinos on March the 16th, uh, I was visiting with our deputy chief, Brian Warner, and he said, you know, we've got perishable food in those uh, facilities. We need to get them out and get them out in the community. So that's how it started. Now, one of the, I think, great things that Cherokee Nation has done over the past few decades that is really paying off dividends now is we've invested in the grassroots of the Cherokee Nation. So we've invested in community organizations so that Cherokee is on the local level uh, can do things like uh, operate community buildings and have cultural programs and other sorts of programs for their people uh, day in and day out in their local community. What that has meant now is, is when we need to do what is really uh, the largest emergency food program in the history of the Cherokee Nation, when we need to pull that off, well, we know that government, as good as Cherokee Nation government is, that we can't execute as well as they can on the local level, at the grassroots level. And so what we've done is we've used emergency reserves to purchase non-perishable food to, to, to come on the heels of the perishable food we got out. We got that packed up uh, and out the door from an old casino facility, actually, in Tahlequah. Uh, we did it in a safe manner. We did it in a protected way. Uh, and we boxed it up and got it out to the community organization. Some 30 community organizations working with us uh, has meant that uh, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,500, we'll probably be close to 5,000 by the end of the week, uh, Cherokee elders uh, have food. So they don't have to leave. So when I get on 
social media or when I'm in our, uh, our, our newspaper stories or when I'm talking to people and I say, I really want you to stay home, uh, we're also saying, look, and you can stay home because we've got you a three week supply of food so you can stay home. So that's one, I think, very important thing uh, that we did. And this is healthy, staple type food. The other thing we did is that first round of food, we tried to focus on our fluent Cherokee speakers. Uh, you know, we're a tribe that's large in population, but we're very small in terms of the number of our citizens who speak Cherokee and they're on in years and they're actually among this most vulnerable population. So we reached out to them uh, with food and we also reached out to them using some of our other Cherokee speakers and our language department and we communicated with them in our language. And even though uh, almost all of these speakers are bilingual, there's something powerful about uh, hearing this message in your preferred language, in, in your native language. And so to be able to explain what this virus was doing to our community and will do to our community and to explain why we need them to stay in place in their homes, to do that in Cherokee, I think, is a very powerful thing. And I think that's true all over Indian country in our respective languages. So that's another thing we did. We set up a hotline. So if a Cherokee speaker has questions or concerns about the coronavirus, when they call, they get a Cherokee speaker on the other end of the line to talk to them about that. So those are some of the things we've done. But I think the most effective <laughs> thing that we've done outside of health care, I think we've been very effective on health care, is uh, harnessing the power of Cherokee community at the grassroots to solve what is a big problem, which is food insecurity. When you've got grocery store shelves that uh, are bare, uh, or uh, at least some of them are bare, and it's hard to get in, and you don't want people actually getting out, going to the grocery store, particularly if they're elders, to be able to deliver that uh, to them, I think was very important. And I think it reminded us that no matter how big the Cherokee Nation gets, no matter how uh, successful we are in business, no matter how big the businesses are, the casinos are, the healthcare facilities are, what matters is that foundation. And if we didn't have this foundation at grassroots, uh, you know, it would crumble in a, in a very quick way in terms of trying to put together an effort to take care of elders in this case in terms of their food. So it has reminded me that we always need to pay attention to that community level strength at the Cherokee Nation. I think because we've done that, we've been able to do something good for our elders. Great. And uh, President Nez, if you wouldn't mind uh, just <clears throat> describing any sort of culture specific approaches you've taken to address this crisis. And uh, you did mention the social distancing requirements you've instituted, so I don't necessarily need you to go into that anymore. But if there's anything else you want to say in that regard, go ahead. You know, <clears throat> we've been going door to door since February, March. <clears throat> letting the Navajo citizens know about this uh, virus. And we even, you know, have a, a name for it in Navajo, you know, the Kosenskaginastetsata is what we are calling it here on the Navajo Nation. It's uh, it's uh, translated as, uh, you know, the, the big cough uh, with the number, of course, and letting everyone know that uh, this virus is uh, very dangerous for that vulnerable population as uh, the chief indicated, you know, our elders up there. And also those that are um, being taken care of by our doctors, uh, nurses, our healthcare physicians, you know. I mean, look, I'll give you the new numbers right now. I just received it, uh, 488 positive cases here on Navajo wow. and uh, 20, 20 deaths so far. Wow. And, you know, if, if you want to have some 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 good news in this, I know this whole thing is not good, especially one death is one way too many. And then we pray for uh, our condolences go out to those families who lost loved ones. But out, out of all those tests that are being done, there are over 2,200 tests that have come back in negative. And so there, that brings some hope to our people out there that, you know, we're... Um, we're, we're abiding by the healthcare professionals' plea of staying home. And uh, the reason why, uh, and let me also mention too, these numbers are 48 hours old. So these are two days old. At the onset of this virus here on Navajo, it was taking us three to four day turnaround before we could get 
um, the results back into our health. Because what we do is we do our tests here on Navo, and then we have to send them off to a lab, and then they do the test, verify it, and then they send it back to the healthcare facility here on Navo. And it was a three to four day turnaround. But the team has got it down to 48 hours. But 48 hours is still a long time. And so, you know, I, I don't know if the chief has uh, received his uh, rapid tests. I know that the uh, White House and, and some of the uh, congressional leaders were boasting about, okay, we're going to get some rapid tests into Indian country through the Indian Health Service. But guess what? Just today, I, I received word that Navajo Area IHS has yet to see any of these rapid tests. Mm -hmm. These rapid test kits, you know, can give you results with, with less than an hour. And yet, yeah. we're still using the old system here, 48 hours waiting for uh, these results to come in. But, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping that those rapid uh, test kits are, are, are coming to, to Navajo. Um, and in terms of uh, utilizing creative ways to uh, help out in this uh, pandemic and getting our, 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 our um, citizens to recognize that, you know, those bold, we need to help those most vulnerable population. We work with our grocery stores here on Navajo. On the first of the month, as you know, uh, everywhere, everybody gets their checks, their, uh, our elders get their checks, their pension, uh, you know, their retirement checks. And so there's going to always going to be a big uh, rush to get food and supplies uh, in Indian country. So what we did on April 1st was we said, okay, <clears throat> we work with the supermarkets from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. We uh, had them uh, open the supermarkets exclusively for our elders. And then in the supermarket, we were doing uh, public announcements in the Navajo language to our citizens, just to remind them of what to do, washing your hands with soap and water, you know, and I think many of, of, of you all that are watching and, and viewing this and our tribal leaders recognize that, especially in the Southwest, we, we don't have running water, you know, we, we are, are, some of our houses are still, you know, uh, we still have a pan there to wash our hands. Uh, with soap and water, and not everybody has the luxury of turning on the, the water in the faucet to uh, help with, um, you know, washing your hands with soap and water. So there's a lot of effort to get uh, water to our folks out there so that they can continue to, you know, abide by washing your hands and cleaning your hands. Uh, but at the, as I was saying about Bash's supermarket, you know, they, they teamed up with us. We got their supplies. And then once they got their supplies, you know, everybody should be at home, right? Uh, there, wouldn't, there shouldn't be nobody saying, I haven't get my food or supplies, especially those that most vulnerable population. And that's why we're gonna do uh, a full curfew over the weekend so that we can do our, our very best uh, as government officials to um, slow down the spread of, of coronavirus here on Navajo. But you know, with, with one, one last thing, uh, yeah. We have, we have FEMA helping us out here. We have the Army Corps of Engineers. We have National Guard. You know, e federal government, they, they send one or two people uh, to help us out, which is great. I mean, we're using their, uh, their knowledge uh, because some of them have done this in other parts of the country, uh, virus outbreaks or uh, earthquakes or something uh, to that effect. And then they come back and, and help, you know, in times, in, in areas throughout the country that are an emergency. And for Navajo, what we're doing right now is looking at schools here on, 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 the, on, on our nation to see if we can develop some isolation facilities, some uh, quarantine uh, areas. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, multi-generations of people live under one roof. So if someone gets sick, we don't wanna send them back into the house. We wanna be able to take them and put them somewhere else so that they can uh, recover and, and the nation will help, you know, with their daily necessities. And uh, with that being done, I think could help uh, slow down the spread. And I, I see that starting to happen throughout the country. Um, but here on Navajo, we, we appreciate the, the team. Team Rubicon as well is out here, you know, helping, helping us out to 
assess these uh, facilities. And uh, BIE is, is come around to help us out and maybe use some of these BIE school gymnasiums here on the Navajo Nation for those isolation and quarantine facilities. Um, obviously, both of your nations have uh, suffered losses uh, during this pandemic. Um, Chief Hoskin, as I understand, the first coronavirus victim in Oklahoma was a Cherokee citizen, um, a man named Merle Dry. I'm actually going to show a photo of him here, alongside uh, a woman named Karen Ketcher, who um, is the former self-governance director for the uh, Cherokee Nation. Um, I wondered, Chuck, if you'd talk a little bit about the impacts of this virus on your community, especially these these kinds of deaths and um, and any deaths, and you know how your people have worked together to to address and overcome uh, these kinds of uh, this kind of an impact, I guess. Well, you know, any death from COVID nineteen is a, a tragedy for uh, the person's family and their larger community. I can tell you uh, that it it does hit closer to home when it becomes one of your fellow tribal citizens. And uh, in the case of uh, Karen Ketcher, a dear friend and colleague, uh, yeah, Mr. Dry was the first uh, death in Oklahoma. Cherokee citizen lived in Tulsa County outside of the Cherokee Nation. Um, a tragedy for his family. Karen Ketcher, uh, the last time I saw her was when we sent those uh, over the age of 65 home. Uh, as part of our response to COVID-19 to, 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 to try to uh, limit the exposure at that time to those who were in a vulnerable age bracket. And she had such a great work ethic. Uh, she was going home to continue to work on one of the many projects she uh, works on. Uh, just a, a, a sweet lady and a professional known uh, really across Indian country. She worked for the Bureau of Indian Affairs. But when you start to uh, see more than just the numbers which are staggering across the country and you start to uh, see names of people that you know and you love I can tell you that psychologically it, it, it is jarring um, the numbers alone should be enough to move any nation whether it's a tribal nation or the United States or a state uh, but I do think there's something uh, that hits you on a very personal level uh, when you lose someone like that so you know we're trying to do a couple of things uh, certainly when I've talked about both of these people passing I have said, and I know this is true, and I knew Karen, uh, that you know their lives were meaningful, uh, no doubt, uh, and their passing uh, is meaningful, uh, particularly to their families and friends and colleagues. But in this uh, crisis that we're in, every loss of life uh, can be even more meaningful if we, those of us that are surviving so far, will redouble our efforts to try to slow the spread. Uh, and try to minimize the number of people infected and the number of people who ultimately die. I think it becomes incumbent upon us more and more and more as we hear these numbers and know these folks that are loved ones and dear friends that pass away that we do that. And so I have tried to use the pain of losing a fellow Cherokee and in the case of a friend uh, to just make me bear down even harder uh, and try to do more for our nation. Uh, and so that's how we're doing it at the Cherokee Nation. Uh, but it's, uh, it is painful. And I've told our, our, our people, and I did it in a video message today, that in the next few weeks, uh, the number of people that are infected and the number of people that we lose is going to increase. Now, what we have to do, though, is try to uh, minimize that. And we're really minimizing the stress on our health system when we do things like stay home. Uh, but we're also slowing the spread. Uh, lowering the number that are infected and ultimately saving lives. We can all do that and we all should do that. Great. And I guess I'd ask the same question of you, President Nez, if you'd describe the impact of uh, the loss of these lives, these 20 lives on your community and what you've done to address <clears throat> that. Well, we are praying for those that have lost loved ones to COVID-19. Um, as you probably noticed, um, as you probably heard uh, these past couple of weeks from the Navajo Nation, uh, of course, there's some frustration, uh, frustration of leaders throughout the country, including myself as a Navajo Nation. Um, one death uh, is one way too many. Uh, we're doing our very best to let everybody know that this is a serious virus since uh, February 
and it's upon us, it's upon all of us throughout this country just to heed and listen to the healthcare professionals out there. I, I wish we could get a doctor or nurse that's uh, been working in the emergency rooms to be interviewed. Uh, they will give you uh, firsthand uh, information of what's happening in the emergency rooms and their plea to the people to stay home, you know, and, and we as leaders are, are trying to magnify that um, in our communities. And it's up, uh, it's up to us to come together and teach each other to respect and honor authority. And, you know, um, we, Vice President Myron Leiser and I will be signing a proclamation tonight. You know, it's, um, it's uh, Easter Sunday this weekend, right? And today's Passover. Friday is Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday is is coming before us. And so we're going to challenge not just our Navajo cities, but let's all challenge each other throughout the country to get on our knees and to pray to the Creator that, uh, you know, these numbers will come down and we don't see more deaths from COVID-19, you know, the creator's in, in charge, right? And let's recognize that. We're gonna be calling our, uh, rather than a Navajo Nation day of prayer, it's gonna be a Navajo Nation weekend of prayer. Uh, our citizens are gonna be home with their family. They're not gonna be driving around. So I think all of us uh, here on Navajo are going to be challenged to um, pray for our first responders, for our nurses and our doctors out there that are on the front lines, and those that are uh, infected with this virus, pray for healing. And like I said earlier, those that have lost loved ones, that you know, there be some comfort and, and healing um, to them for what they have uh, lost and what have, they have endured. Cause you know, we, we don't know what they have gone through. And so, you know, mm -hmm. those are things that, that we're, we're all in this together, as I said, and uh, let's challenge our, our citizens out there to, to pray. We are spiritual people, right? I think every um, tribal nation throughout the country still opens up their meetings with prayer and prayer is still in our schools while federal government has taken prayer out of their schools and their uh, government meetings, tribal people still rely on the creator for everything. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful that yeah. this pandemic will, you know, pass by uh, quickly without any more um, cases or any more deaths in our community. You got to be hopeful as a tribal leader, right? Absolutely. Right, Chief? Oh. Absolutely. You have to have hope, and, and we need our people to have hope. Yeah. Uh, as I understand, um, the two of you, or maybe just one of you, I guess it wasn't clear from what I heard, I uh, had a phone call with President Trump today, and I was wondering if you'd be willing to discuss what you discussed with the president on that call. I don't know about President Nez, but I was on a call today that was a White House call. It was not uh, Indian country specific, although tribal leaders were invited. And uh, I, President Nez, I'm sure you're like me. You could you could be on conference calls all day long, and you've got a good oh, team you know, that covers those, uh, and we do too. I, I did get on this particular call. It was a White House call, as I noted. The President of the United States did get on. Uh, for approximately five minutes, uh, you know, a, a ways into the call, and, and he kind of gave uh, an overview of what the government's doing. Uh, it was not direct engagement. I wouldn't characterize that with a tribal leader or Indian country, uh, but it's always welcome when uh, uh, the government of the United States wants to engage with people who are on the front lines. And look, uh, you, you can't get more on the front lines than tribal leaders and the staff that uh, that works every day, healthcare staff, other staff. And so we need more of that in Indian country, not only during times of pandemic, uh, but we need more engagement with the White House. And so 
uh, again, I would say it was not, at least the call I was on, was not a pure Indian country call. Uh, it was about uh, what's going on at the local level and uh, what sort of resources the government of the United States is uh, providing. Great. Now, have either of you been contacted directly by Tara Sweener, Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs, or Tony Dearman, the Director of the Bureau of Indian, Indian Education? Well, for, for Navajo, uh, Tony called on Monday uh, to let us know that he supports our extension of school closures on the Navajo Nation. So all of the BIE schools are to be closed for the remaining uh, school year. And Tara did give me a call a, a couple of weeks ago too in full support of getting resources from the BIA uh, and the BIE to help in, in our endeavors. So, uh, you know, we've been getting calls from congressional leaders. Uh, Vice President and I were on a call with um, <clears throat> Senator Warren, <clears throat> excuse me, Senator Warren yesterday, just giving uh, her an update. And, you know, we, I think Chief will we'll say the same thing. I think what we really need to advocate for right now is to change some of these hurdles of how dollars go to the now. Navajo Nation or any tribe throughout the country, you know, we uh, CDC gets money and then it comes to the tribe. The states get the money and then it comes to the tribe. Here's an opportunity for Congress to make sure dollars that are intended for tribal communities go directly to tribes. And maybe in the fourth stimulus uh, coming up, they could make some of those major changes uh, for tribal nations in the way monies get down to uh, get to uh, tribal governments. I'm hopeful that people will understand that there's uh, a lot of roadblocks, a lot of bureaucracy when it comes to getting uh, resources to tribal governments, you know, and, you know, right now, Navajo area IHS um, is, is in, in need of those dollars that were allocated to IHS. And so as, you know, two of the biggest tribes here with the Cherokee Nation, you know, the need is great in these big tribes. Uh, but sometimes, you know, uh, it, people do advocate for equal distribution of all 500 plus tribes. But, you know, remember the Navajo Nation is large land base and has a, a big population and those dollars, I mean, even, even the states, right, when they get money, they're allocated based on population. And so it shouldn't be any different for tribes. But, you know, I mean, I'm not saying uh, bad to the smaller tribes. I'm just saying that there's bigger needs and bigger nations like Navajo and Cherokee. Sure. Uh, anything you'd like to add to that? Um, well, j sure. just briefly, yeah, yeah, we've been engaged with uh, leadership at uh, BIA and, and BIE, um, and um, and we always welcome that. But you know, the, the president is right. Uh, it's it's these hurdles that are difficult to uh, manage during uh, good times. Uh, they become very difficult during a crisis such as this. So I'm hopeful as he is, uh, and would push for and support. Uh, something to streamline that that could be born out of this crisis. I mean, it's particularly uh, uh, difficult for a tribal leader to have to think about funds coming to a critical need, but it has to go through a state first. I mean, I know the president agrees with me on this, that our relationship is with the government of the United States. That's what our relationship is, and it ought to be a direct relationship and it ought to be as seamless a relationship as is possible and much work to do in that regard. Great. And uh, Chief Hoskin, as I understand, your tribe has begun or will begin uh, rapid testing. Um, and I wonder if you'd talk a little bit more about uh, that testing procedure and when it might be available to your people. Yeah, that testing procedure could be available this week. We, we were fortunate in that we had uh, machines that can do tests already in our uh, facility, some of our facilities. They had to be adapted with uh, what the they call the reagents, uh, the uh, part of the test that can determine whether uh, COVID-19 is positive. Those had to be adapted and there had to be an agreement negotiated with Abbott Laboratories. So that took a period of time and over the weekend we signed that agreement. So we should have those tests available this week. 
a small subset of the larger number of tests that we have though will be rapid tests and so we're going to utilize those for patients that based on uh, the doctor's decision uh, needs a quicker test. I mean, I, I, I would want for the entire United States for there to be rapid tests for everyone who uh, needed it. What we have to do at Cherokee Nation is take a fairly limited, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 rapid tests that we can do right now and use those uh, in the best interest of the patient uh, and the best interest of public health. So those should be coming soon. Uh, and we're glad for that. But again, uh, you know, we, we can't say it enough that we're all in it together and we need the entire country to have the capacity to do this if we're going to be able to take this on. Uh, the president and I can, can only operate within our uh, governments and I think we're trying our best to get testing done and in, in a Cherokee Nation that has meant some rapid testing that we're bringing online this week. Yeah. Um, president Nez, Great. this next question is for you. Um, as I understand, there are some communities in your on your reservation, such as, um, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce this, Chilchen Beto, that uh, have had um, a number of number of cases, and, um, and as I understand, that community in particular was quarantined. I wondered if you'd talk a little bit about what sort of efforts the tribe has made there to to really kind of deal and address with address those hot spots uh, with the resources and supplies that you have. Well, it's no secret, uh, Kevin, that um, Chochimito was the epicenter, the start of the outbreak here on the Navajo Nation. Um, we locked that community down as, as quick as we could and, um, you know, got food and supplies to those citizens for over three weeks now. And uh, we're, we're seeing other hot spots throughout the Navajo Nation as well. So that, that is the reason why, you know, rather than um, isolating communities right now is that the best thing to do is just to uh, shelter everybody in place, staying home, staying home. I mean, that, we sound like a broken record by now. I think a lot of uh, leaders throughout the country have been stating just that. And um, I'm hoping that the curfew will flatten out that curve uh, and this weekend's full um, curfew of the Navajo Nation. All our visitors that uh, are were coming into the Navajo Nation, you know, we we uh, closed all our travel uh, destinations here, our parks, points of interest, and we just letting everybody know, you know, the visitors, this is a sovereign nation. Uh, please respect and, and honor the uh, sovereignty of our Navajo Nation. And so, you know, people are being turned turned around. Uh, visitors are being turned around. They're looking at plates, you know, and verifying. We got roadblocks and checkpoints throughout the Navajo Nation. And, uh, of course, reminding our citizens, too, that they need to go home. But, uh, of course, we we recognize that they some do have to go to the hospital to get seen, dialysis. You know, they'll, those individuals will get their health care. Um, maybe one person out of a household going to get supplies for the family. We encourage that, not the whole family to go to the supermarket uh, and get their their items and then go home. And we're, I mean, what else can we do? What else can we say other than just to shelter in place and let's stop the spread, you know, um, try to stay away, uh, do the social distancing uh, recommendation by the CDC and uh, the federal government and I know that our, our people are, are listening uh, but but you know of course in any community out there you'll have some folks that uh, tend to uh, challenge authority uh, and maybe not listen but uh, I, I just ask our citizens out there too to help us help them you know government can't do everything uh, we need to all, uh, challenge our citizens to hold each other accountable out there. And if grandma's ready to take off to, you know, uh, a relative, tell them stay home. It's really uh, upon all of us to work together to uh, keep everyone safe here on the Navajo Nation. Okay. But government is there to to supplement those that are are unable to take care of themselves. Those are our priority, the, the most vulnerable population yeah. right now. But if you look at these tests, 
the majority of these tests are people that are that are testing positive are are 60 and, and under and so you know a lot of our, our young people out there probably the millennial millennials are the ones who are, are scared and afraid and once they get a symptom they'll they'll go directly to the hospital and and when they get that test done, it's either positive or negative, but based on the data that we have, majority of them are being uh, tested negative. And, you know, they, we, uh, we're just telling people, if you don't need to come to the hospital, then don't come. Uh, but if you do fall in these uh, symptoms of COVID-19 and if it's severe, then yeah, you, you need uh, medical attention. And that's our focus right now with yeah. the healthcare professionals. Now, as both of you know, um, Native communities tend to be very spiritual. And I know this question of how to address religious ceremonies and gatherings has been one that um, I think has been difficult probably for just about every tribal leader. But I wanted to ask you how you've addressed uh, the this issue uh, in your communities. Well, at Cherokee Nation, uh, our deputy chief uh, will be delivering a message here within the next couple of days uh, talking about just that subject. I mean, the truth of the matter is, if we are a nation that is going to be driven by medical science and facts and compassion to get us through this crisis, then we have to uh, send the message that people need to stay home uh, and that, that is every day of the week, that is unless you have to go out for essential things to stay alive. Uh, spirituality is something that uh, people uh, uh, should engage in and as they choose, uh, but they need to do so in a safe manner, just like everything else. So we want them to do that at home. I, I appreciate what Mr. President said a while ago about this, not just Sunday, but this weekend was gonna be a weekend in which the Navajo people go to the creator. And, and I would say that's going to happen in the Cherokee Nation as well. But our people, if we're doing it in the way that will protect each other, we need to do that at home and we need to do that at home and i think that's absolutely something that needs to happen it's something that i will tell everyone that i can and it's something again that our deputy chief will be delivering uh, in an address to the nation by social media uh, before this week is out and so uh, again i think we have to be safe uh, no matter what the context yeah. well kevin here on the Navajo nation we we don't have the best internet access, but here in Winter Rock, it's, it's okay. Uh, but this tool is uh, something that has been utilized by uh, faith-based organizations, faith-based leaders, uh, and coming together in, in unison in prayer, you know, utilizing technology like uh, what we're using right now. You know, the same thing with other, um, faiths here on the Navajo Nation. And I know that there are traditional practitioners right now, medicine people that are going and doing prayers. And, you know, usually some of these prayers are done by the medicine man themselves. So that continues, you know, those uh, prayers and offerings are, are continuing through uh, the Navajo Nation, probably more so than, than ever before. Um, and then also, uh, you know, with the Native American church, you know, they used to, they, they congregate in a TP. Uh, they're finding different ways to, you know, do their prayers as well. And this weekend, uh, we're gonna have a Navajo nationwide service to have pe pastors and faith-based leaders uh, talk about uh, Resurrection Sunday because it's Easter Sunday, it's, it's really, shouldn't be all about uh, Easter eggs and um, bunnies, but to really uh, acknowledge that the creator is is there and is still here even through this pandemic right now. And uh, I think a lot of churches are gonna do a unified, um, uh, uh, how do you say, a unified service and to do uh, a unified communion as well. Uh, here on our nation. So, you know, this uh, prayer weekend is really to pray for everyone on the front lines and then pray that this uh, COVID-19 will just get out of our households, get out of our communities, get out of our nation, and of course, get out of this country of ours because we are United States citizens. Sure, sure. 
Uh, I see that uh, it looks like the two of you are both broadcasting from your homes. Is that accurate to say? Yes. Yeah. Uh, describe the challenges of managing um, a crisis like this uh, and overseeing such a large tribe as the both of you both do. Um, describe the challenges of doing that while also trying to socially distance. It is very challenging for me and my team. You know, I think it's in the nature of uh, the Cherokee people uh, to when there's a crisis, when there's a problem, to roll up your sleeves and run towards the crisis. Uh, that's true of the leaders with whom I'm blessed to serve. Uh, this is a crisis where almost all of us need to do the opposite. And I think it goes against our nature and I suspect the nature of many native peoples across the country. Uh, so that is a challenge. One of the ways I've seen that challenge is in that food distribution effort that I mentioned earlier. We have so many people who want to come and help with that, but we've got to keep the numbers limited for obvious reasons concerning safety. Uh, and so, but undertaking that big effort, like I say, the largest emergency food effort in the history of the Cherokee Nation, uh, doing it with a, a kind of a skeleton crew uh, and uh, minimizing the impact. So that's been challenging. I think for me as a, as a tribal leader, um, you know, you, you want to be there every day. Uh, but I think what we're finding is that there's ways to lead and serve without putting other people in danger, number one. And that's something very important. When I ask people to stay home, uh, it's not only about protecting them. It's about protecting the people with whom they uh, uh, work with, congregate with, et cetera. And so me staying away uh, as much as I can and, and working remotely is in a way leading by example. And I think to the extent that the Cherokee Nation has been effective in addressing this crisis, and I believe we have by so many measures, I think when we've shown we can do it uh, by doing things like taking our, our, our massive uh, government complex and re reducing it down to a handful of people, uh, closing our gaming facilities and things like that, uh, getting the head count down all over the government and yet still being effective, still meeting needs. I think that shows our people that it can be done and that it should be done. And so, but it is challenging uh, to do. Uh, and I think it goes against uh, our nature uh, in a very real way, but we've got to resist that natural urge to run towards the crisis and stay back and lead. You know, I agree. It's been challenging. Uh, I'm sure uh, Chief has many teleconferences all lined up throughout the day, you know, and you, we, like we were saying earlier, you know, we, we have to talk to some of our federal programs and, and in order for that to happen, there's got to be uh, some tribal consultation, you know, of course we want tribal consultation, but not all at once, right? I mean, it's like <laughs> we're all, we're doing one tribal consultation and then uh, another tribal consultation over here and then yet you know we want we want it right? chief said it himself too and I'm, I'm, I'm the same way I, I, I want to be on the front lines to because there's a lot of fear out there vice president and I are out there because there's a lot of fear and if they see their leaders out there there's some comfort from that and rather than you know being in, in a room like this uh, you know we a lot of us we, we, we want to be out there and we, we are doing that but at the same time, we're, we're being told, oh, there's another tribal call coming up. And then, okay, well, what are we going to do with the call? And we spend an hour to two hours listening to federal uh, officials just talk and talk and don't even allow, at times, tribal leaders to comment. And so it's like, okay, well, I heard that already before at the last uh, meeting. And so I think Chief maybe is, is doing the same thing. And then we're doing the same thing. It's okay. Well, we're gonna just do our very best to uh, be on these teleconferences, but we, we really do need to be out there and helping our Navajo citizens now, especially now with with us on Navajo with uh, uh, all these positive cases. And, and you know, we, we we have our masks, we have our gloves, we have our protection protection equipment on us at all times. So. We're out there, and, and it has been a challenge. I mean, everything has changed. Like, like prior to this, I never knew how to whatever you call this Zoom or uh, be on using your laptop to be on a on a call like this. But it's it's getting me uh, into the 21st century. But we we really want that 
one and one one to one interaction and i think that's who we are as leaders you know we want to bring all our cabinet members into one room we want to bring everybody into one room to to talk things out that's just who we are as navajo that's what they call it you know bringing everything in and to have uh those that are smarter than you in the room to give you guidance to run a nation and and now it's it's pretty difficult to do that on on phones and sometimes technology you know uh we don't know we don't know how to use it at times and, and in some instances they they you know they uh, it, it, it turns off uh, because um you know the internet access is not that great you know and right now for our students that are at home you know our university students are told to go home and and do online courses even the high schools are supposed to do online courses so we're trying to develop these hubs wi-fi hubs if you want hotspot wi-fi hubs throughout the nation so that students can park their vehicle at a parking lot but then again it goes against our shelter in place order so it's like okay we got to change that up so that our students can at least get their homework in so there's a, there's a lot of challenges and uh even getting technology to all parts of, of our nation is has been always a, a challenge as well great well this last question um <clears throat> i would invite you to respond to and then i'll give you an opportunity uh if you would like to uh just to offer any closing thoughts but uh you know, I'm watching the, as we're talking here, I'm watching the uh, comments on Facebook, and a lot of people are offering a lot of warm thoughts to the both of you, a lot of thanks for the hard work that you're doing, and I want to I wanna, uh, mirror that as well. Um, thank you for all the hard work that both of you are doing and everything you're putting into this. I can't imagine what this is, um, what this is like for you, um, but um, what, are there any sort of uh, resources that you still need? Is there anything that, that people... Uh, you know, on the outside, kind of looking in, can do to help your your communities. Oh, yeah. uh, let me let me answer that. Uh, you know, of course, we need the PPEs, we need the the supplies uh, to come in. It's a shortage. It's a national shortage. And so, when your citizens say, "How come you're not getting uh, all these supplies to the healthcare facilities?" They they also need to recognize that all across the country. There's a demand for personal protection equipment. Uh, and the other two is, um, you know, trying to get food into um, buying them in bulk because we don't, you know, a lot of the grocery stores here, we don't want to, you know, buy all, of, all the produce and all the food here. And we want to get it from somewhere else to where they have it in bulk so that it can come in so we can hand those out to our citizens, you know. Uh, I know that there are instances of panic buying off off our nation, but uh, here on Navajo, I appreciate the citizens, you know, um, being a, um, aware of the needs that other people uh, have in terms of, you know, items like meats and toilet paper, paper products, you know, things like that. Uh, I, and so, you know, I think there's a, a big, a big uh, respect for one another that's uh, happening here on the Navajo Nation to, um, you know, slow down this um, buying of goods. But you know, we're 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 doing our best here on Navajo to get those that are directly impacted by the virus the the supplies they need because many of them are self quarantined. They're they're by themselves, maybe in a in a small uh, hogan or something. And, just getting them the food. And just like Chief said, you, you just don't want anybody to be handing out uh, supplies. You have to have uh, training and uh, personal protection equipment, wiping down the uh, non-perishable food items, and then giving it to our citizens out there. Because you don't want uh, a grandma or an elder out there, grandpa, that doesn't have the virus, and then we're giving them a, a food box that might mm -hmm. have the bug on it. We don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. And one of, one of the biggest needs that I see that's hap, uh, that is needed here on the Navajo Nation are volunteers of uh, nurses and, and doctors, you know. Our hospitals and clinics, those uh, workers there have been working around the clock, helping our citizens out, and, and we just don't have uh, many, uh, a lot of employees throughout the 13 plus 
healthcare facilities here on Navajo, so they, they need to be relieved as well. The same thing goes for the um, public safety personnel, and that's where we're reaching out to our county deputies and our state and uh, others to help uh, with the relief efforts uh, on our nation. But I think right now what, what we're asking for is uh, volunteers, of uh, uh, doctors and nurses, those that are certified to come and help relieve uh, our team so that they can get some rest mm -hmm. and they'll be ready to go again once they get some rest. Great. Well, Kevin, I think the president hit on, on things that are true all over Indian country and made some very good points and largely true at Cherokee Nation. I do feel like we're in a better position this week than we were last week in terms of the PPEs we anticipate, anticipate coming in. The testing supplies are, are more plentiful. Uh, uh, things like ventilators, we've got more on the way. Um, my concern is is that the uh, wave of, uh, of of positive tests and hospitalizations will tax and perhaps overwhelm that supply if we don't keep it up. And so those things, Indian country needs more of, and I think Cherokee Nation certainly needs more of. Uh, so those are things we need to continue to push for, whether it's using our own resources or or or, or uh, pushing the government of the United States to live up to its obligation to provide these things. You know, I do want to tell you one of the things we're doing on Cherokee Nation, uh, it, it's amazing to me in terms of the innovation. Our, our deputy chief, our marshal, uh, our health team got together and said, what are they doing around the world to address some of these things? And so they actually adapted some scuba gear uh, and uh, a, uh, used a 3D printer to print out a component that they were using in Italy to adapt a BiPAP machine to uh, use for patients who may not need the full ventilator, but need something to sort of push oxygen into their system. That's the kind of thinking that we need all over the country, and I'm glad we have it at Church Nation. That's the kind of a, a project that could lead to saving lives if it works, and we think it will. So uh, as we said before, and the president said it before too, uh, we can't wait on the federal government to do things, and, and neither of us as tribal leaders are doing that. Uh, but uh, so that kind of innovation, I'm proud to see as the Cherokee Nation, but we still need to push for those basic things of testing uh, and PPEs and, and frankly, the ventilators, uh, because as we have more people that need it, no doctor in this country wants to be in a position of choosing which patient gets the ventilator. We ought to be a country, the United States ought to be a country uh, in which there is not a shortage of ventilators uh, when we have this kind of situation. We're that kind of country right now and that needs to change in a hurry. Great. All right, I'd like to invite uh, both of you if you would have any closing thoughts to uh, offer that. You know, I think what we really need uh, throughout all of Indian country is to step back, take a deep breath, and pray for everyone that's involved. I mean, everybody throughout the country is dealing with this virus. Every state throughout the union is dealing with, <clears throat> excuse me, positive cases in their states. Tribes are seeing more and more positive cases coming in. I, I, as spiritual people, as the first uh, citizens of this country, you know, we need to unify in lifting our prayers to the Creator and let us be that voice for everyone throughout the country, right? throughout the world that the intervention of God here is can happen with our faith in the Creator. Um, and lastly, I, I said early on, you know, we're all five finger beans. All of us, all the tribes have gone through some tough times, you know. You got the long walk for the Navajos, you got the Trail of Tears. Every nationality in this country has gone through some tough times and this is one of those tough times that we are currently going through but we will overcome <clears throat> this time um, I use the example of the long walk you know many of us uh, were taking off our homelands and we were ready to be taken off this world really but the resilience of our leaders from the past 
uh, our, our elders, our ancestors of the past, you know, prayed and really took us back into our, onto our homeland right now. And now we are dealing with this virus and it is time for all of us to unify no more negativity right i'm sure there's some negativity that you're reading on those comments but we all need to push that aside because there's a reason that this is happening and maybe this reason is that we need to continue to share or have our elders share the culture and their way of life teaching to the younger generation <clears throat> here's an opportunity the schools are closed for the rest of the school year elders to share the teaching uh, that they have to the younger generation so that it can continue to get passed down from generation to generation so i am hopeful uh kevin and, and chief that we will uh help each other out here in this time and to also work to improve and to make a, a better nation for all of us. And I think uh, with the prayers that are gonna be said throughout the country, throughout the world this weekend, uh, we will overcome this and we'll be stronger um, because of that. So thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, appreciate that. Well, Kevin, thank you for having uh, me on the show. And Mr. President, it's just been an honor to be on this show with you, and I admire the uh, efforts that you're undertaking uh, at Navajo Nation. Um, you know, he mentioned the struggles that Native peoples have been through before. I think this is true of probably every Indian nation, every Indian tribe in the country. This is not even the most difficult thing we've ever been through, and we've overcome those things, um, sometimes at a steep cost, and that's certainly been true for the Cherokee people. But our ancestors overcame much worse. They did it because they had each other's back and we overcame obstacles that I think many people believe we would not overcome. In fact, some people uh, hoped we wouldn't overcome. So here we are dealing with the greatest public health crisis uh, in many generations. Uh, and the Indian nations in this country are on the front lines of it. So a couple of things I would close with is the government of the United States needs to remember both of those things, that Indian nations have overcome a great deal, a great suffering, great dispossession, great loss of blood and treasure. We are still here and we are on the front lines in this crisis. Whether we fail or succeed uh, in this, and we will succeed, but how strong we are in this will be in part a measure about the United States commitment to Indian country. And that goes back to resources that Indian country needs to not only uh, address this pandemic, but to recover. And that's another, probably another topic for another day is what does the United States need to do to help Indian country recover from this crisis when it subsides? Uh, but the other thing is this, uh, if the Cherokee people are listening to this show, and I think Indian people all over the country, we need to remember that who's on the front of the front lines are the healthcare workers. And many of those are our brothers and sisters, our fellow tribal members. They're working every day and they are in harm's way. We need to remember them. We need to say a prayer for them. And we need to do something else. Everybody I think I talk to says, what can we do to help? This is a situation where you can actually help those on the front line by staying home. That's why I implore Indian people all over this country to stay home. We all need to do it because we're all in it together, whether it's Indian people or the society around us. But if you want to do something in this crisis and you're at home, you need to stay there. If you want to think about the healthcare worker, the doctor or the nurse or any of the medical professionals that are putting it on the line every day, if you want to think about them, if you want to do something for them, then you need to stay home. That's really what flattening the curve is all about. It's about making sure we don't overwhelm our healthcare system by having too much of a surge of positive patients flood into the uh, healthcare systems and just crushing them. We can't let that happen. Indian people are tough. We know how to get through a crisis. We need to tap into the, uh, the uh, strength of our ancestors. And in this case, instead of rushing towards the crisis, 
we need to sit back and we need to stay at home if at all possible. We will get through this. And Kevin, there'll be a show down the road where I hope I get to be on the panel uh, with the chief, with the president, uh, and there'll be brighter days ahead for both of our nations. Oh, yeah. because we'll get through this. What else? Absolutely. Yeah, I would definitely invite you back right. if you're both willing. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And um, I know all of Indian Country's hopes and prayers are with the both of you as you address this crisis. Um, thank you. Good night. Well, stay home, stay safe, save lives. Absolutely. Right on.